In a museum filled with treasures, a masterpiece stands out, a prized work by the French Impressionist Camille Pissarro, a rainy afternoon in Paris. Years ago, it hung in a family living room until the Nazis sent an envoy and removed it. It's my painting, there's no question about it. Claude Kassirer was born in 1921 into a prominent Jewish family in Germany. The painting once belonged to his grandmother. My mother had died, and my grandmother was like a substitute mother to me. And she lived in an apartment right around the corner from where we were living. And above the couch uh, was this painting, this Pissarro painting. And that is part of my life. That's how I was brought up. The Kassirers lived a life of privilege until the Nazis came to power and persecution of Jews in Germany intensified. Fearing for their safety, Claude's grandmother and her husband Otto Neubauer petitioned the German government for an exit visa. In response, the Nazis sent an appraiser to evaluate their property. He came to my grandmother's apartment in Munich and he said, my grandparents could leave Germany, but they were not allowed to take the Pissarro painting with them. They made it very, very clear that this was not a matter of choice, that if my grandparents wouldn't agree to this transaction, they would end up in Dachau, one of the worst concentration camps near Munich. When World War II ended, the grotesque realities of Nazi war crimes were exposed and proof of systematic plunder and cultural artifacts was revealed. Hundreds of thousands of paintings, sculptures, and jewels had been taken from churches, museums, and private homes across the continent. Claude Cassirer and his grandmother both escaped, but their family heirloom remained missing. Until more than 60 years later, Claude saw a photo of the painting hanging in a museum in Spain. I could hardly believe it. I could hardly believe it. That was such a coincidence and such a miracle. The painting had changed hands at least five times in three countries over a 50-year period before it was purchased by one of the world's wealthiest art collectors, Baron Heinrich von thyssen bornemisza in 1993, the Baron sold his collection in a joint arrangement with the Kingdom of Spain and a foundation museum that now bears his name. For Claude Cassirer, seeing the painting that day was a glimpse into a boyhood long past. With the painting was my grandmother's love, how she spoiled me, how she fed me, how she went on excursions with me, how she helped educate me, all these issues are interrelated. Kassirer petitioned the museum to return the painting. And when that didn't work, he decided to sue the museum and its host country, the Kingdom of Spain, for the return of what he believes is stolen property. Representatives of the Spanish government and officials at the thyssen bornemisza Museum declined interview requests for this story. In a written statement, the museum asserts that it's the legitimate owner of the work and that Mr. Casera's request has no legal foundation under Spanish law. Further, the museum contends that the Casera family was duly compensated for their loss by the German government in 1958. Claude accepts that his family received $13,000, but even that he had to split with another claimant. For some crazy reason, which I never understood, we had to give part of the money to the guy who stole the painting. Why, I don't understand. Today, the painting's value is estimated at $20 million. But Claude insists there's much more to this case than money. I would be a fool to say that uh, money is of no uh, concern. But why should they have something that's worth five or 10 or 15, 20, 40, 50 or 60 million when it doesn't belong to them. And it's as simple as that. Many legal experts expect Kassirer will face considerable challenges in court. Uh, generally, uh, 
the more an object changes hands, the more difficult the case will be. You cannot keep stolen goods. The Defendant Museum puts the plaintiff to the proof. Prove to me that you own the object. Prove to me that it was stolen. The case has been tied up on jurisdictional issues. It means prove that you have the right to haul me from Spain into court in the United States, that that's uh, just and fair and equitable. You know what I would say to them? If there's any question of in their mind legally, there should be no question in their mind morally. The point at which law ends and morality begins is often very hard to find. The museum has to make a legal, moral, and ethical judgment about what it should do. I never give up, and we're never going to give up about the Pissarro. Cases like the ownership of this Impressionist masterpiece are forcing the legal community to reevaluate the intersection of property, law, and morality. A single artwork has traveled through the years from a living room in Nazi Germany, over oceans and back. It's a journey that represents both the best and worst of our humanity as society wrestles with the aftermath of war.